हेलो इज इज मिस्टर चंपक मिस्टर चंपक दिस इज गौतम गौतम फरेबी एक्चुअली बाई मिस्टेक आई ट्रांसफर टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज टू योर यूपीआई अकाउंट I think I entered the last digit by mistake actually. I came to this hospital at Munni Chowk where my father is getting admitted actually he is very serious and uh, I needed to transfer money to the hospital guys but by mistake I transferred it to your UPI account. Brother could you please give this money back to me by UPI because my father is serious and I have to pay to these hospital buggers. Yeah you can give this money back to my this mobile number that I am speaking from. Yeah yeah I am holding brother don't worry I am holding. What? you are not able to pay what what is the error are you getting oh i really don't know what the issue is let me do one thing let me text you a direct link that you can directly pay this 10000 back is that okay yeah 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 let me just text it now have you got the link yeah you can just click on that link and just pay the 10000 rupees using this link thank you so much brother you are such a kind person yeah got it actually i've got the money thank you so much brother see you bye bye this is a very popular upi fraud that is going on right now in this fraud fraudsters will make a call to you so in this example that i showed you gautam farebi is a fraudster and he calls mr champa and says to him that by mistake i have transferred 10000 rupees to your upi account that is what fraudster will tell you and then they will say that can you please give this money back to them using the same upi method but what will happen is that you will not be able to transfer this money back to them using upi they have done some sort of settings since you will not be able to return this money by the upi they will send you a link they will sms you and will ask you to use the link now if you use that link this link is not going to take you to any upi app what that link is going to do is it is going to open a remote desk app and what that remote desk app will do really is that it will give fraudsters complete access to your mobile phone meaning next time when you enter any upi pin that pin will be seen by the fraudster next time when you do credit card shopping then your credit card details will be actually shown to the fraudster and also if you are doing internet banking your banking details will be seen by the fraudster meaning the fraudsters will have the complete control and visibility of whatever you are doing on that phone because you simply clicked on a link that was not a upi payment transfer that link was actually a remote desktop application there are numerous fraud cases going on right now for example 18th of october a delhi advocate loses rupees 50 lakh rupees in a sim swap scam i'm going to explain to you how does that scam work also last year an ahmedabad trader lost close to 2.39 crore rupees in fact if we look at rbi's 2022 23 report we will see that close to 30000 crore rupees have been lost in the digital fraud cases that has happened in india so in this video let me walk you through step by step process of how these frauds are happening and how i am safeguarding myself and it's not just me companies like mobiquick who are doing a fantastic job by sponsoring this type of content so that you can be safe and secure while doing any digital payments because let's face it we all need to continue doing upi payments because it is easy simple faster and convenient and on top we get cashbacks as well for example mobiquick keeps running cashback promotions using upi one such ongoing offer is that you are going to get 250 rupees cash back if you do rent transfer using the upi on mobiquick you can send your rent using mobiquick upi app to any other upi app that your owner may be using and this money that you will send gets directly credited into their bank account Another ongoing UPI offer that is going on right now on Mobiquick UPI app is that you get 50 rupees of cash back if you do total UPI transactions worth 5000 rupees. And the beauty is that you don't need to even do KYC to get started. You can do UPI transfers only using mobile phone numbers. You can scan any QR code from this app to make UPI payments. You can download the Mobiquick app to get these offers. You will find the link in the description. Let me now walk you through scam number 2, which is SIM swap scam. As we saw a Delhi advocate lost 50 lakh rupees a trader in Ahmedabad lost 2.39 crore rupees both were the sim swap cases how does that fraud happen let me walk you through step by step process of how that fraud happens and the safeguards that we need to put in place step number 1 is fraudsters will first steal your personal information personal information meaning your name your address your phone number and your date of birth and it's very easy to get hold of this information because people are giving their phone numbers to every pizza corner that is asking their phone number so please do not give your personal details to anybody just refuse outright 
once fraudsters have got your personal information they will move to step number two which is that they will try to steal your personal banking information for example your credit card details your internet banking user id and password how do they do it very simply they will send you a link and the moment you click on the link a malware will go into your mobile device or your laptop device the link that they will be sending you is going to be using various use cases for example you have not paid your electricity bill or for example you have income tax due or credit so you want to take the refund or not so click on the link below like these you are going to get links in your messages using whatsapp or sms and if you click on that link malware will go into your device what will that malware do it will actually steal the user id and password and give it to the fraudster after having your personal banking details they will move to step number three in this step what they want to do is they want to get hold of your mobile sim card because ultimately if they need to do any transactions they are going to need the otp without otp they can't do any shopping without otp they can't really transfer the money so what they need to do is get hold of your sim card for that what they do is they will go to your telecom provider like jio airtel or whoever it is and what they will do is they will impersonate you meaning they will act as if they are you by giving your personal details they will tell you that my name is so and so my date of birth is so and so my address is so and so and they will place a request to port the number from your sim to their cloned sim they will have a cloned sim ready and they will try to port the number your mobile phone number from your sim to their cloned sim and for this all they need to do is pass through the dphx and the telecom provider will easily port your number to their sim card meaning all the otps now will start to go to their sim card and this is what actually sim swap means that your number has been ported from your sim card to their sim card now how can you safeguard yourself from this fraud point number one is never click on any links but more importantly point number two that you must have a separate sim card or phone number for your banking related transactions and that phone number you are going to not give to anybody except the bank or any financial institutes where you are actually doing money transfers no one else should know that number that phone number is exclusive only for your banking transactions let me walk you through scam number three very recently i was reading this article on linkedin by puja dubey 9th of november and here she's talking about how a teacher got duped because of this fraud let me quickly tell you what the story was so there was this teacher let's call her sunita sunita listed her tuition services on a platform called urban pro one day sunita gets a call from unknown person acting as a military officer and says to sunita that sunita i am really impressed with your tuition services and i would like you to teach my kids sunita said sure why not they exchange their fees services timings and etc to sunita's surprise this military person did not negotiate even a single rupee and was ready to make the payment immediately sunita said i take an advance of 1 month rupees he immediately agreed and said let me transfer it to you right away so this military guy who was on the phone is trying to make a upi payment while sunita is waiting to receive the money instead of receiving the money what happens is that she gets a request on her phone to make a payment she looks at the upi request to make the payment and says to the military guy that hey you were supposed to pay me i am actually getting a request to pay to you what is going on here he said to sunita ma'am since i work in military we use a different payment gateway so the way it works is like this that you first need to honor this pay request and then i will transfer you double the amount he said that that's why you are seeing a payment request of 1 rupee only are you able to see 1 rupee request sunita said yeah i am able to see 1 rupee request he said to sunita go ahead and please pay this and immediately you will see 2 rupees coming back to you sunita goes ahead and approve the 1 rupee pay request and then immediately she gets 2 rupees credited so here the fraudster have established the trust with sunita already thinking that this is a legitimate military guy because we all respect military folks what sunita does is now this time she gets the full amount request to pay she makes the payment now she is waiting for double the money to come back and guess what boom the money is gone from sunita's account so is the fraudster moral of the story never try the unconventional payment methods just stick to the basic payment methods so far if you're finding this content useful a simple request you to like this video and let me know in the comments any experiences you may have had your friends or families may have had in terms of the frauds so that more and more people can be educated about it and we all can be really safe from these fraudsters with that let me move to scam number 4 another real life story of a girl who lost 55000 rupees in this story there is a girl whose 
father runs a grocery store and generally his father will ask his customers to make UPI payment into this girl's account. So one day this girl gets a call from an unknown person saying that your father has asked me to pay you 10,000 rupees. She said fine go ahead make the payment. He says ma'am I am first doing 1 rupee transfer so that I can make sure that the money reaches to you. He does the 1 rupee transfer and he asks the girl ma'am have you received 1 rupee? The girl says, yeah, I have received 1 rupee. Thanks, ma'am. Now I'm going to do 10,000 rupees transfer. Then he says, ma'am, have you got the 10,000 rupees? The girl says, no, I haven't got the money yet. Then he says, ma'am, it's actually gone from my side. Can you please see if you have got an approval request? She says, no, 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 I have not got any approval request so far. Then this guy says to her, ma'am, wait, if you have not got the link, no worries. Let me send it to you by text. All you need to do is click on that link and you just need to approve the request to receive the money. She gets the message. She clicks on the link and the link says 10,000 rupees will be transferred through a merchant ID. She thinks that this money is coming to her and all she needs to do is approve this incoming request. She clicks on approve and boom, the money has gone out of the girl's account to the fraudster, not the other way around. Moral of the story is that in order for you to receive the money, you never need to approve anything. So please make sure you do not click on any links to receive any money. Look. Fraudsters will continue to come up with new fraud ideas. As long as you do these five things, you are likely to be very, very safe. Number one, use a separate phone number and SIM for all your financial transactions. Do not give this phone number to anybody except the banks or the financial institutions. Nowadays, most smartphones come with dual SIM, so you can use that. Number two, Use a separate email ID that you need to give to your banks and do not share this email ID with anybody. Because if you do that, your email ID will be safe and secure and nobody will be able to steal your personal information. Number three, remember this simple rule. If you need to receive money from anybody, you don't need to approve anything. Number four, never make any payment using any external links. Always make a payment by signing into an app and that's the only way to do payments. For example, MobiQuick is a very safe UPI app that you can use. Number five, never make payments when somebody is saying it's an urgent payment. Take your time, buy some more time to think through. Even if you need to transfer one rupee, please make sure do not do it under any urgency. So if you implement these five practices, you are likely to be very safe when it comes to online frauds. I hope you found this video useful. Please share this with your friends and family so that they can also safeguard against the online payment frauds that are going on. Lastly, I've also launched my new Hindi channel where I talk about current affairs, geopolitical situations and many other interesting subjects. You will find the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Humble request, go and check it out. And if you like it, subscribe to that channel as well. I will see you in my next video. Until then, keep rocking.